Welcome to episode 145 of the Real Wrestling Show. And we are the Real Wrestling Show for what we believe to be the Real Wrestling Show on the television at the moment, which is Telling Doors. A-E-W. Yeah, boy. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of the ages of 15. We proudly bring to you the greatest wrestling tag team, blog and tag team champions of the world. We got the clean shaven, bald bastard Big Z alongside with my man. The phenomenal Dozy, and together we make up the real wrestling show. Dash bloggy. Oh, and what we do on here is basically we do a rundown and uh, our opinions and our opinions only about uh, AEW's Rampage and Dynamite, the other way around though. We're going to start it off with Dynamite, and uh, then we're going to go on to Rampage. So, please keep watching. Yes, wonderful. So yeah, I started off with CM Punk versus Max Castor, which was um, a very, 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 very stale match for me. Yeah, I thought it was um, not the opener we used to, not no. the fire opener. No, I would have preferred a promo over um, this. Say again. What did you say? I laughed. Oh. I laughed. <laughs> we call him the laughing laggy because of the lag we've slightly got. Um, yeah, I'll run through this one quickly. Uh, a bit slow to start this match. A few back and forwards. Um, rib breaker when he caught Punk by Max Caster. That was quite nice. Stiff Irish into the turnbuckle by Max um, but he gets chucked into it in his front Fishbuster by Max Caster gets a two count Hurricane off the top by Punk was quite nice uh, Bowens causes a distraction Punk hanging on a rope and then a coast to coast coast to coast type move by Max Caster which was quite nice uh, he missed the mic drop Tombstone fucked up then he done it and then the Anaconda Vice for the finish which was a bit of a sloppy end to a sloppy stale match to be honest um, the winner of the match, CM Punk. The man of the match, Max Caster. Yeah, I love Punk. You would. How many more Mentos is? Two. Two. Yeah, just the one. Just the one. Boop. Uh, after the match, Tony yeah. says... Two seconds. After the match, Tony says, what was the message... Have you given it all uh, uh, across his belly? And he said, I want a title. Give me. So, yeah. What were you saying, Embro? Say it again. I want a real title, he said. Yeah. A real title. I want a real title. Oh, it's gone all hashy. Do apologise for the footage oh. of the bearded one. Uh, he's a little bit grainy at the moment. But next up, we had a promo with Alex Marvez. Shoot. Uh, FTR. Don't forget about. No? Oh, what? Yeah, that's it. Okay, FTR. With um, Mark Steven in the background. FTR, our friends with Warner. Yeah. And they don't want anything to do with MGS Beef. And one of those beats, so cracks in the pinnacle are showing. Very, very, very identical to the way that Inner Circle went. Yeah. With the Eddie Kingston thing, like, but obviously it's an inside member rather than an outside member. Yeah. Um, well, just tell you the last few weeks after you have been after, after baby, baby base. Yeah. Well, and then there's the, the whole ROH thing then like about it which being might, yeah. as well, might as well say yeah which is being um oh no it wasn't FTR was it to do with telly no my bad fuck yeah. that so forget, forget that shit on. forget that shit do you want to run through the next match yeah right. next up we have oh Ward Wardlow did end up coming out though by the way yeah that's it right it's not, he came out with this. Did he? 
I take that back as well then. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Jamie Bob versus John Moxley. Um, what does that say? Mox. Mine says Office he'll take down. Stands behind the back and offers a free shot. Jay Lethal, they start teeing off on each other. Uh, nice German by Mox. Mox pulled off the top onto the wood. No blow style by J. Lee Bob. A two take two uh, two toe base by J. Lee Bob. A superplex by J. Lee Bob. Cross body by both, like smashing into each other, causing that cat out bit. Always like that in a match. Uh, King Kong. Yeah. King Kong Lariat by Mox. Mox counters the lethal injection into a sleeper. Lethal counters into a pin and gets a two pound. Uh, brain Buster Lethal then the uh, Lethal Elbow gets a two count Mox hits a paradigm shift Mox wins I went with Mox Man of the Match uh, I went with Jay Lethal Man of the Match Mox did not hit the paradigm shift Mox hit a DDT ok and you know it you know it I did have quite a big number though I had four I had three yeah it was alright it's a good match, I felt. Much better than Probably the first. Should have been yeah, I agree. Definitely so should have been, been Yeah. Do we have anything after the match? Mox, it's not a good shift. Mox, by the way. Oh, uh, no, they shook hands. Just a handshake, yeah. Oh, I did write on you as well. Uh, a couple of times, Jay Lethal went for the elbow drop. And where Mox just kept on getting up. I like the way Lethal was selling it. Where he was like, Yeah. Oh, fuck, fucking hell, man. What have I got to do? And you could hear him, like, muttering stuff to himself, like, do you know what I mean? And, like, kind of shaking his head as though, like, what? Why does he keep getting up? You know? Thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, next up, we had a promo, which was Marina Shafir. Shafir. And just a bit of hype yeah. behind her. Uh, XMMA. And, to be honest, looks like a pretty beastie wrestler, do you know what I mean? I think, I'm not sure, I might be wrong, but I'm sure she's the one which was released by NXT and was, uh, she's married to Roderick Strong. Oh, is it? I'm pretty sure, but I might be wrong. I think, I yeah, think I think, uh, I think she is linked to something with NXT. But, um, yeah, she's all right, man. She's, she's very similar to, now people are going to go, oh, well, just because they're both foreign or whatever. It's like, no, they've both got very similar styles, which is uh, Marina Schaffer and Leila Hirsch. Yeah. They would make an awesome team in, like, do you know what I mean? Like, just because of their styles. Their styles are very, very similar. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, next up, we had FDR versus the Ass Boys. Oh, they're the Ass Boys. Now. Oh, they're the Ass Boys. Um, <coughs> MJF's music plays. Everybody like kind of shoulders drop in the ring. He comes out on commentary. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Austin, yeah, my first note of the match is Austin walks on Dax. Cash cleans house. Uh, jumping knee. Jumping knee to arm. Double team by FDR. Not sure what that is. Uh, Billy takes out Cash on the outside, which was look quite heavy. Billy again t- uh, distracts him and takes out one of them on the outside. Cash backdrop was nice. Dax tags in and cleans house. Same sort of thing that Cash did earlier. Uh, suplex counted into a body press by Austin. That was nice. Uh, Wardlow then in the backstage comes through and puts a guy through a table. And then Wardlow comes down the steps. Billy tries to stop the pin. Cash stops Billy. Big rig finish. FTR wins. I went with Colton Man of the Match. <clears throat> I had the Dax match. And two. Um, just the one. Yeah, for me though, it was like, it was a great match and lots went on. And I know I didn't note on some of the bigger stuff that happened. Like, But for me, a lot of the bigger stuff that happened, it was all done, like, not exceedingly well, but it was all done well. Yeah. So, so everything looked really fluent, like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's, I genuinely did think it was a really great match, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know? So yeah, my notes are a little bit 
lack on. Oh, well, they did this and they did that. I noted the ones that I felt were done big and well and noticeable. But other than that, man, they, they did. They put on a bit of a, a clinic show, like. Yeah, FTR always, uh, always put on a decent show, I think. But, uh, I think I'm all right. Got to give a bit of uh, credit to the ass boys, though. So I said, Gunk Club are doing all right. Oh. Sorry, I, I didn't realise you used their unofficial name. Uh, how many moments did you have? Um, yeah, just a win. About two. Just two. Um, after the match, MJF comes down, tries to celebrate, touches Dax, and he goes nuts. Uh, kicks off because of Wardlow, coming down during the match and whatever. Which is a very great, good angle. I don't think I've seen that before. Where yeah. the wrestlers in the ring get pissed off because somebody has made a fuck up, therefore having someone inter interfere in their match, sort of thing, like taking the limelight off them. Yeah. You know? So uh, that was pretty cool. But yeah, thought it was a great match. What we got next? Great match. Still going. Hmm. Next up, we have the Keith Lee, Will Hobbs. Hyper Rampage promo. Indubitably. And then we had another in ring promo with Jazz. Attacked by Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz. It went on a bit long, this promo for me. Yeah. <coughs> Santana threw a chair in the ring and it went straight out the other side. Jericho attacks with the belt, uh, back, belt to Eddie by Jazz, Judas Effect, blah, blah, blah. It did go on a little bit long. Because it, like, it started off with a bit of a backstage, whatever, and it, it probably would have suited us that only. But then when it went down to the ring, it was like, oh, maybe this is going to turn into a match. And then when it didn't turn into a match, which it probably should have, it was just, yeah. oh, right, okay. You know? In that circumstance, I think I would have had a ref. <clears throat> Tony can come out and be like, all right. Send a raft down. Go. Yeah. Oh, what match is it? Go. No. Pin or submission win. But, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. A little bit, little bit long on the seconds. Yeah. Next up, we have a Tony interview with Jade and Sterling. Sterling wants Jade's own to be Diva Bates. But option two, which Jade wants, is Maria Sophia to get a 30th victory on a rampage. Yeah, which Maria Sophia is not going to win that match, I don't think. No, no, no. But it's, it's right. she's being set up because she is quite a formidable opponent to make Jade look awesome, which she probably will. Yeah. It's, it's only Jade that makes herself not look good. Which is um, quite hard to do. She is improving now. Week she is improving. Week. Yeah, she is improving. You know, some of the some of the promos that we, that we are still going. Uh, yeah, Jade promo. Just move on and not talking on it. It's because it's shit and it doesn't need to be. You know, this one did because it was there was substance to it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, anyway, move on, shall we, bro? Yeah, that's that. We have Brian Daniels. Be 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 yeah. Uh, nice Matt wrestling by BD and Uta in the beginning. Drop kick out of the corner on the counter by Uta when uh, Brian Danielson runs in the corner with his running knee. That was nice. BD hangs Uta up the dry, then kick his kicks, then the nylon knee off the top. That's two for BD, 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 BD. Did you call it the nylon uh, knee? Huh? Yeah. The nylon knee. Yeah. Yeah, might be dish. Just checking. That's what she was the one who started doing the first in AEW. She does that every week, so yeah. we'll see what they would move, innit? Nope, that's cool, man. That's happy with me. I'll call it that from now on. Uh, big chops by both. The big chop off moment. Uh, German by Uta gets a two count. Dragon suplex by BD gets a two count. 
Beastie Pin, uh, they're calling it the Seat Belt by Eula. Yeah. Uber gets a two count. Uh, the Psycho Knee by BD. You uh, spits in BD's face before the stomps. The Pile Driver, then the Labelle Dog. BD, BD, BD wins. And I went with you, uh, man of the match. Snap. Yeah, you, Wheeler. Incredible match this was. Absolutely incredible match. Ula Wheeler, 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 whatever his name is. He's pretty good. He's, yeah, he is. Yeah. He has warmed on me massively. Like, in the beginning, it was like, ah, uh, he's just like anybody else, like, but he has, like, he does shine, man. He does really shine, like. But I had a booker. Five times. Snap, brother. A booker. Five times. Five times. Yeah, great, great match. Great, 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 great match. Um, and a lot of storytelling in the match as well. Even though there's no real storyline to the rivalry other than he wants to join the club, he has to initiate because next match is going to be him versus Mox. Yeah. You know? He's had a few matches for Mox already, hasn't he? I know, but it's going to be a. He's still going to have to go through him to get into the the BCC. But uh, yeah, for me, it's have to team with one of the best friends and fight them both, and I'll shine the other person like Gary. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to work because of the heat of. Well, what are you playing at? Like, you want to fucking leave and go join them? Like, do you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. I, I feel like the story in this worked well in the sense, like, obviously all the way through it, you it was like, ah, no, you ain't. I'm the underdog. I'm the underdog. People expect me to win. I need to win. I need to win. I need to win. And Brian Daniel yeah. played the played that I'm hitting him as hard as I can, like, but he ain't stopping. He played that well yeah. as well, like, do you know what I mean? So it, it showed that it did, it showed that fortitude, like, you know. It so, was yeah. one of those matches as well where you thought, like, right at the beginning, ah, Brian Daniel's gonna win this, no no dramas, like, shall we? Yeah. But as you were watching you were like, mm, maybe. This yeah, that's what I mean. Like the the story yeah. was there with that, you know? So, yeah, massive, massive big up to you in this match. Uh, next up, we had a promo, and it was Andrade Idelidelidelio and Derby build. Uh, it was all right. Wasn't too bad. I've seen better from Derby. Um, and then we had an in-ring promo from Adam Cole and Red Dragon with the belts, and they've got tape over the names of the actual champions, just a little bit of masking tape with their names on it. And there's a box in a ring. And then they open the box, there's balloons, celebration, blah, blah, blah. O'Reilly stumbles his, uh, what he's supposed to be saying. He literally has like a bit of a breakdown in the middle of the ring and it sits on the floor. Whilst then Bobby Fish kind of keeps everything going. And then Hangman rocks up in a Tesla with horns on it, which looked fucking shit. And then attacks everybody. Jungle Boy Luchasaurus Cage come out to help. Not beat up Hangman, yeah. to help Hangman. It was the toy car version of JBL's car, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, the anti-gas guzzling. You know, it was dreadful, though, man. It was a dreadful, dreadful look. Like, yeah. a Tesla in white doesn't look good. Any yeah. any other colour would have been fine. Do you know what I mean? Could have added it, like, here in a brown. It would have been fine. But, yeah. But, yeah, that was... Um, I don't know, man. It's like Red Dragon and Cole. I'm not. I'm not really interested at the moment. They're just not doing it for me, man. You know, I like. I like O'Reilly. O'Reilly's got something about him. He's quality, young guy. He's always been my favourite album. The most underrated, I think. But Bobby Bobby Fish has got a a reasonably good promo to him. Cole's got a okay promos, but he haven't really. For me, he haven't really got anything else. Like I mean, but Bobby Fish is just kicking everybody. And I know the other wrestlers are kick kick uh, everybody. But Bobby Fish just stands out like like he hasn't got any other moves. Yeah, you know? like he's just like a kick guy. Yeah, you know? So for me, it's they're just lacking massive, massive, massive amounts of something at the moment. Like, But I would put the focus on O'Reilly if it was me. Um, yeah. Next up, we had a promo. Tony Schiavone with Thunder Rosa. Promo on stage. First Mexican to win a world title. Come get some if you want some. That's to her opponents. So, uh, yeah, that was all right. Good little promo. Better than Vicky. She uh, took a swipe at Nyla as well, because obviously Nyla attacked last week. Yeah. But it was so much better than Vicky just shouting over the top of it the whole time, right? Um, yeah. And then we have one more promo, and I'll run through the match, which was FTR challenges the Bucks to match number two. 
which um, that then gets answered on the Friday's episode of ROH Supercard of Honor. But uh, yeah, next up we had The Bunny versus the mystery opponent, Miss Tony Storm. Whoop, whoop. Uh, a couple of good things. It was a good match, but I was a bit let, like a little bit let down by it being Tony Storm. Not because it was Tony Storm or anything like that, but it was like, ah, oh, okay. Like I was expecting something. I was expecting Mia Yim to be honest. Okay. And then call her Jade, and have Jade versus Jade loses. Whoever loses loses the mat name. No, even better, loses their career, and then have the Jade we've got now lose a career. <laughs> and then maybe she could become a like I'd know like a Tesco worker or something, and then she can get hired by WWE. I'm talking spaff. But anyway, let's get into the match. It was Bunny versus Tony Storm. Misdirect off the off the ropes by Tony, and the commentators made a massive thing. Well, I've not seen anyone do that before. Well, I, actually, someone did it last week. I can't yeah. remember who it was, but someone definitely did it last week on Elevation or Dark. Um, terrible knee on the apron by Ali. Tony was just like kind of hanging through the ropes and waiting around for ages. That was not very good. Um, Tony gets chucked into the post. Headbutt to the tit by Tony. That was quite cool. Just giving it all a bosh straight in the boob. Uh, Fisherman suplex by Tony gets a two count. That was nice. Uh, Death Valley driver by Bunny. Super kick by Bunny was nice. Caught a real sweet, whether that was Tony selling it good or whether that was Ali selling it good. But either way, it looked good. And then we had the German suplex and then a pile driver for Tony for the finish of the match. Tony Storm wins. I went with Bunny, man of the match. Uh, I was still a man match. I had just the I one. Win. Yeah, same for me. It was a good match, so it wasn't like it wasn't like loads of things that happened. But in all fairness, not knowing too much about Tony Storm, I know she's been on AEW before, but Bunny always tends to have pretty good matches. I don't think she's been on AEW before. I thought she has. Well, she's been in NXT and WWE for the last year and a half, so. Well, IEW's been going for the last three years. Yeah, I know, but, well, bro, when we went to Cardiff Takeover, she was in the main event. Oh, was she? Why, why, yeah, did she I, why do I think that she's been there, then? Maybe I read I somewhere that she was backstage or something like that. She might have been backstage, but I'm pretty sure she's never been on IEW. Oh, okay, I stand corrected. I take that back as well. Um, Yeah, it's a good matchup. But uh, yeah, I did feel a little bit let down with it being <laughs> not somebody different, you know. Well, I like I like Tony Storm. I think she's a good signing. Yeah. We'll oh yeah. man, my lighter just popped. Fuck. <laughs> Even more disappointed. <sighs> Moving on. Vicky and Nyla are dressed under Rosa. Excuse me? Excuse me? Excuse me. <laughs> I fucking broke my lighter. Moving on to the main event of Dynamite. Oh, Dynamite. Oh, Dynamite. Oh, Dynamite. Which was Darby Allen versus Andrade. It stings, buddy. Uh, Tony by Andre, then launches Darby over the table, over the timekeeper stable. Um, yeah, smug as fuck he was. Yeah, Darby. What's that? Darby backs, but smashes and drives it into the steps. Then Ollie off the apron. With his skateboard, obviously. I was just going to say, uh, Ollie's uh, not a person in this match. Ollie is a is a skateboarding move. Yeah. Uh, Darby jumps off the steps. Drady catches him in a vertical suplex. Uh, just, just Darby right. launched a vertical suplex on the so on sideways steps. Yeah. The outside. Uh, Darby sent upside down into the back wall twice. Drady. Backdrop, Darby, 
Never when I run backbreaker stand in by Andrade. Uh, Darby slammed into the ring post, which they keep 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 telling us the square ring post. Did you know as well? Square. Did you know as well those ropes? They're actually steel cables. Oh yes. They would hold up a lift. Oh yes. Just in case, just in case for you folks out there that didn't know. Uh, Canadian Destroyer on the counter. I thought already uh, double punch out, so they bang each other out. That was crap, I was. Uh, yeah. Darby and Andrade with his... Hits a steel bread. Slice bread. Steel bread. Darby hits a bread with his arm, then, but then hits a steel uh, a slice bread. A uh, nice backbreaker by Andrade. Top rope crucifix into a Fujiwam armbar by Darby. Was fucking incredible. Yeah, it was beast. Uh, Jose comes down. Sting <laughs> takes him out straight away. Butcher and Blade take on Sting, then Darby, after, uh, after Dupe takes out Butcher and Blade, Buckle Bomb on the counter, then uh, uh, and lose finish DDT, Drade wins, I went with Andrade, man of the match. Yeah, I agree, Andrade did win, Andrade was the man of the match. I had quite a big number, eight. Yeah. I had six. Yeah, it's a good match. Like, generally, overall, I don't think the matches of this show were too bad. I think everything was ad entertainment to it. I just think it started off with a dreadful start, like. But the show did build to a good finish, do you know what I mean? Yeah, every yeah. match seemed like it was getting better and better. Yeah. With the first one being dreadful, so it wasn't much to actually, you know, try and go after, was it? Yeah. You know? Yeah, generally, I thought it was a good, thought good show. I thought it was the best in this, match, in this show. Yeah. Yeah. There's quite a lot of them as well, still. Yeah. But, um, yeah, generally, though, Dynamite this week, pretty entertaining. You know, yeah, it's possible. It's obviously no WrestleMania because Dynamite's better. But now we're going to go for a break, and I'm going to make a cup of tea, and then we'll be back to do Rampage. So back from the break, we are now going to run through Rampage, Rampage, Rampage. Dozzy's going to kick it off. And we kicked it off with the Young Bucks versus Top Flight. Um, Atomic Drop on the counter by... One of the Spot Monkeys. Uh, assisted Tope by Dante. Nice. A uh, big super kick on the apron by Nick to Darde, then Matt to Darius. Uh, buckle bomb by Darde, then a dive through drum up kick. I'm oh, sorry, by Matt, not Darde, man. Uh, top rope shotgun drop kick by Darde. Kicks roll through flatliner sent on combo when top flight was beast. Gets a two count. Uh, roll through. Deadlift German gets two for Darius. Dan A trip off the top to the outside into the guardrail, which basically Sucked. takes him off the match. Sucked as well. Yeah, he looked shit there. Yeah, he, he didn't actually get to the guardrail. Yeah. His arms did. His wrists would have been out of the match for the rest of the match. Yeah. Um, BT trigger. The Young Bucks win, I went with Matt Buck, Man of the Match. I went with, didn't write Man of the Match because during the end of the match, Jet started talking to me, I got distracted, and BTE trigger for the finish. But I did have three moments that I did note. Agreed, three moments. Ah, yes, very nice, very even. I don't know why I did Dan Housen's slogan there in Matt Hardy's broken thing, but there we are. Uh, yeah, it was a good uh, match. Yeah, it was a good match. Yeah, it was a good match. But um, for me, it was just it was it was Generation Me versus the Young Bucks. 
That's all it was. It was just yeah. a it was a, a a ring full of spot monkeys. I know um, rampages and meant to be like the premiere show, but it very much feels like the B show now. Well, well, I don't know. I would have said this match, like with it being a spot monkey match, it still was entertaining, but it was a spot monkey match. But for me, this made it the Bucks being on Rampage. I don't know why, but it made it feel a bigger, a bigger moment, like yeah, bigger Rampage because they've got some main players on there which ain't normally on there. Yeah, yeah, I suppose that's what I mean. Like, um, yeah, like I said, I, I would just. Like Rampage sort of a bit more sometimes on it. Well, like, like more. Like having the end of it on it, or oh, maybe right. Ryan Daniel being you know, on there a bit more. Yeah. Or Mox being you know, on there a bit more, you know what I mean? Well, in a perfect world, what would be great, which it can't happen, would be that it went Elevation Dark Rampage Dynamite. Yeah. But obviously, moving Dynamite to a Friday night. Messes around with TBS, blah blah blah, and you know, it's not that's not really gonna happen. But that's what they need, I feel. That's the happy airs for resources. Typically, at the beginning of a week as well. Though. Say that again. Typically, you do have the best wrestling at the beginning of the week as well. From every show, like this, it's very rare a show or here like right on a Thursday or Friday night, and it'd be the main show. No, I appreciate that because of the way that people live their lives and they go out and, you know, they yeah. don't just stay in on Fridays and stuff like that. No, I, I appreciate that. Like, I mean, Fridays, Saturdays are just stupid days to have wrestling anyway. You know, pay-per-views on a Saturday, not so much because at the end of the day, you can make a night of a pay-per-view. You know? And yeah, people are, yeah. more and more people are like. But for me, um forgot what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, for me, like, wrestling, a product like AEW, which has got that... Now, I know you, you're you not into watching all of it, like, but you've got <clears throat> BTE links to it, Sammy Guevara's blog, uh, blog links to it, Alex Abrahentes does a blog that links to AEW. There's lots of stuff that goes around. There's, like, post-interviews. There's loads of stuff that is very, very media, you know? And that's kind of where the biggest voice of the fans live. Do you know what I mean? Now... For them to, to be like that. Now, like I said, you're not one to be like re reading into things on Twitter, Facebook, whatever, blah, 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 blah. But there are a lot of fans that are doing that now this day and age. Like, it's, it is the way to follow wrestling. Do you know what I mean? Now, AEW doing like a product that, in a sense, like what, what we got in the UK now being EastEnders, is you've got Monday, Tuesday. They miss out Wednesday. They've got Thursday and Friday. The storylines build up from Monday and the crescendo is on the Friday. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like they they could potentially start doing that and maybe build it up to a Wednesday and then the overspill of Wednesday's action goes on to Rampage. Yeah. Something like that, like do you know what I mean? But I think that's how we need to be presented more so. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's my take on it, Blair. So yeah, sorry about that uh, little rampage. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and then next up, you'll miss that land of promo. I agree with a different side to me. Yeah. Looks good, man. Yeah, definitely. Is she joining the House of Black? Uh, no, I don't think so. No? We call that. Nah. It's really hard people, isn't it? No. I don't. I wouldn't see any sense in it being Julia Hart. It's like at the moment she doesn't need. She, like she's getting better at wrestling, but she doesn't know how to play a character. Yeah. You know. She's. she's black would be the character to play for it, and all she has to do is like, stand there and be like, "Now it's the black anymore." Yeah, but that's not going to get her that far, though. For you know, it'll get her so far, but not all the way. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it'll give her knowledge and. Ju Julia Hart. Julia Hart, for me at the moment, <clears throat> is still at that point where she finds inappropriate things funny. Like yeah. someone will go, uh, "Oh, I was, I was out, I was out the other day, and I seen a couple of tits in the trees." Oh, he said tits. Yeah, but it's a bird. 
grow up, like, do you know what I mean? It's context. Mm. It's a stupid example because I, I still laugh at the word fart. <laughs> I don't. But, you know, it's, it's that humour. But as a performer, you have to lock that stuff up. And she's still at the point for me, she's still finding things very uh, childish in a way, like, which she should as well. She should, like, I don't want to see her with a heavy makeup and stuff like that. I still want to see her having fun and, you know, and stuff like that. I think going to the House of Black wouldn't be a good move for her. Another good work. Okay. But, uh, next up, we had a Dan, Ethan, and Sky uh, who looked, uh, who took a picture of a naked. What? Or who they say in who took the picture of Sammy and Tay naked on with the belt, saying it was a fuego, and then Tay and Sammy smash up the car in the background that looks like it was parked next to a rubbish tip of sorts. <laughs> I don't know, that could just be me miss seeing that, like, do you mean? But, uh, yeah. Like Say again. Didn't even look like a good car. No, it was a BMW, like, but, yeah, it didn't look great. Um, I will say one thing. Take on E was probably about two inches away from probably fraction of her skull, where she uh, she slammed her hammer into the side of the car and it literally bounced off like, ah, past her head. She's very yeah. lucky, man. Very fucking lucky. Yeah, I was cringing, mate, watch. I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, no. Because you've seen yourself, mate. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, where people hit a window with a sledgehammer, they can't, they can't yeah. like, catch that overbalanced weight and the handle comes up and whacks you in the back of the head, like. You know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah, I was I was quite worried on that problem, man. But it was good, though. It was very good. Uh, next up, we had Hook uh, doing a promo with Tony, was it? Yeah. Tony Schiavone and then Dan Housen comes back out and h curses Hook again and nothing happens and Dan Housen's pretty pissed at that I think so uh, yeah keep an eye out on that it's going to keep on happening I think but I'm loving Dan Housen man he's funny he's so funny um, but yeah do you want to kick off the next match Blin? and I'll do the one after this uh -huh. one Yep, we have the House of Black. This is Hugo, Bruno, and Stu Grayson. Uh, Hugo tags himself in after a bit, after Grayson is trying to tag Hugo, you know, showing non tag team chemistry type thing. Yeah. And uh, it costs the Dark Order, they get taken out by this. Uh, Brody launches Fuego outside on the dark border. Uh, kitchen sink by Black. Combo sit out popper power bomb by Dark Order. Brody cannonball to the outside, takes out Dark Order. Uh, poison Rana by Fuego. Big kick by Black. House of Black win. I went with Brody, man of the match. I won with Fuego, man of the match. We had a very different opinions on all of our man of the matches. Um, and just the two, just the two moments for me. Uh, zero moments for me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I didn't really rate this match to be honest, bro. I thought it was a good match, more storyline than anything though. Yeah, it was quite short, but um, yeah, it was quite a couple of spots in it. Uh, next up, we had the Bucks. Says all about the belts they've uh, had in the past, and then Brandon Cutler is pointing out a few more as they go, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I forgot about that much." Which generally, when you look at the accolades that they actually have got, they are pretty. They are pretty historic, like do you know what I mean the Bucks. There's a few belts out there that we didn't mention though that uh, FTR win, but the Bucks haven't. Yeah. But they didn't mention any belts at all about FTR. They didn't bring their they didn't bring their accolades into it, which uh, I thought was alright. Yeah. And then they accept FTR's challenge, which they accepted FTR's challenge on ROH on the night. Okay. Yeah, they actually turned up on the ROH show, like. Right? And that's why this week's episode of BTE was called Teleportation. Um. But yeah, next up we are Jamie Hayter versus Sky Blue in what was a wonderful match to watch. Uh, it was a good match, bar one move 
which I think I have wrote down. But yeah, uh, kicking it off. Standing Tierres by uh, Sky Blue. She was that was quite cool. Uh, Suplex into the corner by Hater uh, looked good. Terrible crucifix by Blue. The crucifix bomb. She didn't actually lock both her arms yeah. in. It kind of went over like a back roll thing. That's the the one move for me. Um, nice string of moves by Blue. Didn't write all of them down, but she executed all of them pretty well. Backbreaker by Hater was nice. Hurricanrana to Hater was nice. Uh, nice trip up by Blue. It was uh, quite unusual. Big backdrop by Hater. Stiff kick by Blue. Super kick. Uh, superplex. And then a brain buster by Hater. And then the lariat for the finish of the match by Hater, which was pretty good. But I went with Sky Blue, man of the match. Well, the opposite of them. Yeah, well, obviously, yeah, yeah. Jamie Hayter. Jamie Hayter. Yeah. Yeah. It was a brilliant match. This one, I had four, four moments. Just the one for me. Just the one. But yeah, it was... Um, this match, it was an Owen Hart tournament match, which you didn't mention. No, I did not mention it. I'm, I'm good at not mentioning that type of stuff. But yeah, I didn't... One thing I didn't like... The fact that uh, Hater kind of did a, f a, a flurry of finishers, but then decided to pick it up in Italy with a lariat anyway. Yeah. I didn't see I didn't see that as necessary on Sky Blue. Like, I think it would have put it over more if she had just uh, hit the hit the, su uh, the superplex. Yeah, hit the superplex or what? No, was it? Yeah, no, it was Sky Blue that hit the superplex, wasn't it? No, it was a hit. She hit the superplex and then held on to it. Yeah, and then it was a brainbuster. Yeah, that should have been it. Yeah. I think that would have given her far more props from that match than actually picking her back up then, <laughs> sending a message, sending a message and basically being yeah. like, right, bang. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, like, not to take anything away from Sky Blue, mind, because Sky Blue is awesome, you know, and she is getting better very, very quickly. But, yeah, for me, it was like just that one... That, that one lariat at the end just didn't need to be there but uh, yeah other than that a great match a good match but uh, yeah just a one moment for me and I'm going to say four yeah yeah well next up we had a promo uh, from Penta says don't forget about the death triangle to the house of black saying you're distracted with fuego and uh, yeah. yeah not the greatest one of the greatest promo no no again Still, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it needs. I think Phoenix needs to be be there with him to be doing it. Like it's a, it's a, it's a bit weird because I thought they'd be able to capitalise on the misfortune of Phoenix. You know, because Penta was obviously the Impact World Champion. He basically ran Lucha Underground. Yeah, he is a star. Yeah, and it doesn't feel like on AEW he is anymore. No, no, it doesn't. It's like even when he had Pac with him last week or whatever it was it's like Pac alongside yeah. Penta doesn't look right because Pac's not going to be doing this whole goblin type gimmick yeah you know he's not he's not going to do that it's like don't get me wrong Penta Oscuro is it's a good enough it's a good enough gimmick but it's just I don't know it's just not quite there is it yeah you know I think Phoenix would probably help if there was the two of them doing it I think it probably would help yeah but uh but after let time tell us. But yeah, don't forget about the death triangle. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, over to you, buddy. The last one. Split screen promo with Will Hobbs, Keith Lee, and Mark Henry. Yeah, whatever. It's Bing. time for the main event. The Rampage is in. Which was Will Hobbs versus Keith Lee? Uh, Keith Lee sends Hobbs to the outside. They brawl on the outside. Hobbs sends Keith into the post. Then the guardrails. Uh, ball and lariat by Hobbs was nice while Keith was on his knees. A big backdrop, a backdrop by Hobbs on the counter and a power slam. Big deal by Keith, then a headbutt. Uh, Starks runs down with a chair, but Keith punches it out, punches out of his hand away. Swerve takes out Starks. Spinebuster, but the ref is distracted. 
by Hogs, that is. A spirit bomb by Keith Lee. Keith wins. I went with Hobbs, man of the match. Hobbs, man of the match. Yeah. And in the uh, in the picture and picture, that's when Keith Lee says, indubitably. Yeah. And yeah, uh, two moments for me. Yeah, great, two moments. Yeah, it was a good match. I did feel was like... It, oh, yeah. I did what enjoy it. I, th- I think they were a good uh, a good pairing, like. I do, I think he did there. Uh, Will Hobbs, good as well. Well, good to rub out of the NFL. Mm-hmm. But Hobbs made uh, Keith Lee look a million dollars, man. Exactly. Um, but it also makes Keith Lee look at uh, Will Hobbs look like a million bucks for being a green one mm-hmm. and being able to do that. Well, I don't know, man. I, I wouldn't say Will Hobbs is a green one anymore. He, like, you know, I, he's not really a green one, but he still is. That's be fair. He hasn't had like he's had big storylines. He hasn't had a major storyline. No, he main character yet. No, yeah, yeah. That I'll I'll grant that. I like, but I can't remember the last time that he he looked green. Do you know what I mean like? I oh, know he hasn't looked green for a long time ever no. since he's been here. Like, to be honest. Yeah, I think so. I think so, mate. But he's, he's looked good, man. I, I don't know. He's off the green list for me. He's off the green list. But right, what do we have after the match, Blade? Blade? Uh, Blade? Yep, yeah, we had um, Stacks, the Royal Shambol, Swears for a table, Bobs takes up Cupid with a chair, Bobs spears Lee through the table, uh, pitched in the corner. Ricky Starks is bleeding. Yeah, it was a Rochambeau through the table. Through the table. Yeah. It's a Rochambeau to swear through the table. Oh, sorry. My bad. Through the table. So yeah, I've got nothing else on Rampage. It's been a bit of an eye show. I think, um, I think Dynamite was better this week. Dynamite was definitely better. Um, uh, Rampage was uh, better than last week. I don't know, you were... Well, you were all over Rampage last week, weren't you? No, there was one good match, we both said. There was one good was match, it? and the rest were shit. Ah, I thought it was the other way around. Yeah, but, uh... Yeah, it was all right. I, say one thing, I think pretty much every match at moments were the same. It's just that amount of matches were different. Well, they were up and down slightly. You had the six, I had the two on one of them. But, uh, anyway... Let's move on before we do the news. A little bit of an impromptu part, which those you're probably thinking, fucking hell, bro, I've got to go and eat my food. Uh, a couple of things have happened over this particular weekend, which we had WrestleMania happen, we had a uh, Super Card of Honor from ROH happen, and we've obviously had Amp- Dynamite and Rampage, which we've just talked about. Quick talk about a couple of things that's happened over the weekend. Nothing like nothing spectacular. Uh, Briscoe's versus FBR was supposed to be absolutely phenomenal. It wouldn't surprise me. It was supposed to be the match of the weekend's wrestling in total. Yeah. Um, Samoa Joe. Is that one of your news? It's not. I left that to you. Excellent. Yeah, Samoa Joe has uh, debuted. He debuted on Supercard of Honor. He's now uh, All Elite. Um, Cody, obviously, making the debut at WWE. WrestleMania. WrestleMania gets a huge pop. Everything's everything's the same that he had on Dynamite. Yeah. All the music, everything like that, which can only be a good thing for Dynamite as well. Yeah, exactly. You know? Um, one thing I'm gonna say though, Cody basically did an interview recently in Variety or Variety yeah. or whatever, and he basically said that he is the greatest wrestler around at the moment. And to push things further, there's nobody that is a close second. He said that. Now, if that's not the same old all about Cody, I don't know what the fuck is. But I will say one thing. The entrance and everything like that over in WWE, it works. Absolutely works. The pompous entrance, the pompous, all the big hoo-ha... It works in WWE. Exactly. But yeah, any any other notage? Anything worth noting that you've off the top of your head for WrestleMania? Or any wrestling over the weekend? No, like you said, I've only watched two hours of WrestleMania. Um, I was actually like 
must have gone to fall asleep when the Cody match came on. Mm. And this is what, yeah. So like, baby, I recognise this music, it's Cody. And I could read what we have, I was like, well, so I have to watch this match then. And then I went to bed. Yeah. So that's all I've seen. Nothing to that point. Well, uh, I've been any a super card, the only thing I saw was the AEW so would you open it, you said. Uh, they had a couple more bits and I've got. Do you want to hear him or are you going to watch it? Go for it. Uh, I'm going to watch it. Brian Cage is Teddy Blanchard's mystery guy. And also, he has now got a tag team being Leona, Leona Toa, who's been on yeah. Dark and Elevation quite a bit, and Khan, who's been on Elevation and Dark. A bit. They're both fucking they are from what I remember of that. Yeah. yeah, I do like both of them, mate. They're called something like Pain of Agony or something like that. Yeah. Pains of Agony. But yeah, that's all I've got uh, touching on this weekend. There probably is more that will come out that I don't know. So uh, now we're going to move on to some rumours of wrestling. Uh, Hernandez says he is done with impact but left on good terms. Yeah. And Ace Austin. Has signed the multi year contract to stay with Impact. Oh, is it? Yeah, which makes sense, I think. For both parties, they've pushed him out. And they need to keep hold of some of their homegrown talents. It's not going to keep growing if they keep making stars. And then just as they're about to become big, they go with WWE or AEW or yeah. well, whatever. That's the same with every company, mate. Do you know what I mean? I did read something the other day about Impact about. Uh, a couple of the wrestlers mentioning about how come with the forbidden door how come other people seem to feature on other people's shows but impact wrestlers don't seem to feature on anybody else's shows yeah which is I don't know I don't know why that is like do you know what I mean but um, I kind it kind of makes those bunch of wrestlers unique you know yeah and if people do want to watch them they have to watch impact which is a bad thing really sometimes because you've got WWE you've got AEW they're the two big giants that people are watching, you know? Yeah. So it's hard to push that extra in. There's like. a lot of hype around that week now as well. Mm. Yeah. But it's getting hard, man. It's getting hard. Because now, obviously, you know that ROH and AEW, they're going to start doing, like, inter-bloody storylines in between ROH and AEW. Like, so that's going to be like, oh, fuck, man. What did we miss? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So... But ah well, never mind. You got any more bits of news? No, that is it. No more? Brother. I've got no more. I'm glad. But anyway, I have been the Bull Bastard Bigsy. I've been the Donald Dorsey. And we've been awesome. So there's only one thing left to say and that is thank you everybody who watches, thank you everybody who likes, thank you everybody who shares, thank you everybody who's made, helped us make this blog or helped us pro to produce it or whatever. You know who you are. Uh, thank you everyone for liking and sharing. Please share to any wrestling fan that you do know. Subscribe and put some comments in the bottom. And check out the other videos we got online, which are... Many. There is Merchandise Season 1, Merchandise Season 2. First episode is a... Se season 2 is slightly delayed just because I have no internet. When my internet is installed, I will carry on filming Season 2. There is footage of live events, backstage banter... The Greenhouse from the past and many of these episodes. So chill, go check them out, go and have a watch. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. And last thing to say is catch you next week. Hello, Wrestling Show Dash Blog.